Peace be upon you, brothers and sisters. This is Saeed Mirza from WeDonNotReason.com. And in today's talk, I wanted to look at uh, Satan, the first unbeliever. Now, this article is based on the work of Sam Garens, which you can read for free at reader.coronite.com. And if you want to just read the article, you can go on my website, WeDonNotReason.com slash articles, where this article is available for free. So, let's begin. First things first. What does the Qur'an mean by an unbeliever? The Qur'an uses two phrases, Al-Lazina Kafaru and Al-Kafirun for the unbelievers, those who are the damned. Sadly, Muslims have not understood the critical difference between these two enemies of God and the believers. In this article, we will focus on the second group, the Al-Kafirun, as they are the most dangerous of the two groups of unbelievers. So first, let's look at the first group. Um, in passing, this is the Allah Zina Kafaru. Now, a working definition for them would be those who ignore warning. That is, they they are those who do not care whether a day of judgment is coming or not, and they are oblivious to warning, and they are happy and busy in this temporary life. In modern parlance, we call these people atheists, and their motto is "Live your life." Or YOLO, you only live your life once. Their condition and the reason for their condition are both highlighted in the Quran in the beginning of the second chapter. Those who ignore warning, it is the same to them whether thou hast warned them or thou hast not warned them, they do not believe. God has sealed their hearts and over their hearing and over their sight is a covering and they have a great punishment. This is chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So where this brother Gans is translating those who ignore warning, these are in Arabic called Al-Lazina Kafaru. Now it is a straightforward matter to identify these people and be cautious of them since it is never a good strategy to associate with the damned. Now let's look at the real issue here, the Al-Kafirun. And what does the Qur'an, that is God, what does he mean by the phrase Al-Kafirun, which is usually translated as unbelievers. And when Muslims understand Al-Kafirun, they think of these people as those who are uh, denying the village of Islam. They do not convert to the village of Islam. But we shall see in the Qur'an that, that this is not what the word Al-Kafirun means. If we look at the Qur'an and see how they're defined, we can come up with a working definition of them as the false claimers of guidance. What does that mean? Th that means that these are those people who claim to be on the right path and following guidance, when in reality they are not following the guidance of God and they are the workers of corruption. The identification of the Al-Kafirun is not so easy since this group of people talk, walk, and dress as a man of faith, and in reality, they are an enemy to God and the believers. Thus, we would expect them to be hiding behind uh, the walls of the faithful, that is, the believing communities, and faking their true intentions. God tells us of their characteristics by which we can identify this nefarious group. We read in the Quran. This is chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And of men are some who say, We believe in God at the last day, but they are not believers. They would deceive God and those who heed warning, but they deceive only themselves and they perceive not. In their hearts is disease, so God has increased their disease, and for them is a painful punishment because they have lied. And when it is said to them, Work not corruption in the land, they say, We are but those who do right. In truth, it is they who are the workers of corruption, but they perceive not. And when it is said to them, Believe as mankind has believed, they say, Shall we believe as the foolish have believed? In truth, it is they who are the foolish, but they know not. And when they meet those who heed warning, they say, We believe. But when they are alone with their Satans, they say, We are with you, we are only mocking. God mocks them and increases them in wandering blindly in their inordinancy. Those are they who bought error at the price of guidance, so their transaction profited not, and they were not guided. 
Their likeness is as the likeness of one who kindled the fire when it had illuminated what was round about him. God took away their light and left them in darkness so they do not see. Deaf, dumb, blind, so they will not return. Or like a thundercloud from the sky wherein is darkness and thunder and lightning. They put their fingers in their ears against the thunderbolts in fear of death, but God encompasses the al kafirun which Brother Garans is translating as the false claimers of guidance. The lightning nigh snatches away their sight. Whenever it gives them light, they walk therein, and when it darkens over them, they stand still. And had God willed, he would have taken away their hearing and their sight. God is over all things powerful. So, these Al-Kafirun hide their true aim, which is to work corruption in the land, to destroy the family structure, to destroy all that is right and just. However, they are unable to hide their true faces from God and the believers. The believers see through their deceptions and actively warn them to not work corruption in the land. But they reply in the usual doublespeak that, on the contrary, they are doing right. They also have contempt for the faith of the generality of mankind. That is what mankind as a whole believes, that there is a God and there is a day that is coming, the last day, in which all will be judged, and to simply do good works. This simple faith, which they consider to be foolish, is difficult for them to accept, since, according to them, they are beyond such naive concepts of good and evil. That is, they do not have any morality. As the famous Freemason saying goes, Do what thou wilt. Now I want you to cast your eyes around you and look for these al kafirun these false claimers of guidance, these people who are arrogant towards God's revelation and refuse to submit to the command of God. These are the men who dress themselves in the garb of religion and call themselves believers but are actively destroying mankind by waging holy wars, misguiding men and supporting the tyranny of today. These are our true enemies. Satan, a model for the al kafirun An interesting thing that cropped up in my study of the Qur'an was that God called Iblis, a being made of fire, an al kafirun This is chapter 2, verse 34. And when we said to the angels, Submit to Adam, then they submitted. Not so Iblis. He refused and had waxed proud and was of the al kafirun Here, Brother Gans translates al kafirun again as false claimers of guidance. Now this creature Iblis, who is called the Al-Kafirun, and we know him as the being called Satan, he was not always the accursed being of today. We know from the Quran that he once enjoyed the privileged, privileged position of being in the exalted assembly of God. But he was arrogant and proud and did not submit to God's command and this brought about his down, downfall. And even though he hid his true arrogance, God knew that he was of the Al-Kafirun and exposed his true nature to Adam. So now we get into the subject of arrogance and pride. These are the two hallmarks of Satan. In the episode we shall discuss, we will notice two characteristics of Satan which led to his expulsion from the heavenly assembly. These two characteristics which are all too obvious in the Al-Kafirun of today are arrogance and pride. That is... Satan's arrogance to obey to the command of God and his pride in his constitution of a higher substance. Since we know from the Quran that he was made from fire and Adam was from clay, so he despised Adam and was not willing to submit to him. Thus, it is not that the al kafirun do not believe in God, which is the common understanding. They do believe in a God and know that he has sent down guidance. But due to their pride, they simply refuse to obey God's commands, like their model, Satan. It is simply impossible to claim otherwise. How could Satan disbelieve in the existence of God when he was right in the presence of God and God was commanding him to submit to Adam? It does not make any sense. Therefore, the al kafirun believe in the existence of God, like Satan, but actively refuse to submit to the guidance that he has sent down. This is due to their arrogance, thinking that they know better, and because of their pride, 
refusing to accept that God chose to communicate with mankind through common men, that is, the messengers and the prophets of old. Let us look at the episode of Satan's downfall in the Quran in more detail. This is chapter 2, verses 30 through 39. And when thy Lord said to the angels, I am placing in the earth a successor, they said, Wilt thou place therein one who will do harm therein and shed blood, while we give glory with thy praise and hallow thee? He said, I know what you know not. And he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he presented them to the angels and said, Inform me of the names of these if you be truthful. They said, Glory be to thee, we have no knowledge save what thou hast taught us, thou art the knowing, the wise. He said, O Adam, inform thou them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, Said I not to you that I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you have concealed. And when we said to the angels, Submit to Adam, then they submitted, Not so Iblis, he refused and had waxed proud and was of the false clamors of guidance, that is, the Al-Kafirun. And we said, O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden, and eat thereof freely, wheresoever you will, but approach not this tree, lest you be of the wrongdoers. But the Satan caused them to fall therefrom, and turned them out of what they were in. And we said, Get you all down, an enemy to one another, and for you in the earth are our dwelling place and provision for a time. Then received Adam words from his Lord, and he turned towards him. He is the accepting of repentance, the merciful. We said, Get you down from it altogether, and if there comes to you guidance from me, whoso follows my guidance, no fear will be upon them, nor will they grieve. But those who ignore warning and deny our proofs, those are the companions of the fire, therein they abide eternally. Now God, by naming Adam as a successor, was implying that the dominion of the earth was now being transferred from angels to men. Hence the reason for their protest. They questioned God as to why he would create a being which will spill blood and cause corruption when they glorified God and were pure. However, Things were not as, they, as it seemed. They did not know that there was an Al-Kafirun in their midst, that is, Iblis. And that is why God replied to them, I know what you know not. That is, he knew there was a creature in their midst who was working corruption and was arrogant and was proud. We read in chapter 2 verse 34 again. And when we said to the angels, submit to Adam, then they submitted. Not so Iblis, he refused, and had waxed proud, and was of the Al-Kafirun. God, in his infinite wisdom and knowledge, brought out the true nature of Iblis in front of Adam, when he commanded the angels to submit to Adam. Iblis, being proud and arrogant, refused to submit himself, because he was of the Al-Kafirun, that is, he was proud and arrogant. Similarly, the Al-Kafirun among men refuse to submit to God's command and are arrogant and are proud. But all their wealth and glory and show and pomp will avail them nothing and they will enter the fire like the first of the unbelievers, Satan, their role model. We read in chapter 2 verses 38 and 39 again. We said, get you down from it altogether. And if there comes to you guidance from me, whoso follows my guidance... No fear will be upon them, nor will they grieve. But those who ignore warning and deny our proofs, those are the companions of the fire. Therein they abide eternally. And we read in chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. And they will emerge before God altogether, and the weak will say to those who had waxed proud, We were your followers. Can you avail us something against the punishment of God? They will say, Had God guided us? We would have guided you. It is the same for us, whether we be distressed or patient. We have no place of refuge. And the Satan will say when the matter is concluded, God promised you the promise of truth, and I promised you, but I betrayed you. And I had not over you any authority except to call you, and you responded to me. So blame not me, but blame yourselves. I cannot aid you, and you cannot aid me. I deny your ascribing to me a partnership before. The wrongdoers, for them is a painful punishment. That's it for now. God willing, until next time.
Peace and blessings be upon you.